Hey, what's up guys? My name is Max and I am a Young Life College leader here at NAU. And I am super excited to be able to share this little story I got here for you guys. So, I'm um, on a hike as I'm trying to do a lot more of these hikes now since I really can't do anything else. And I use these hikes kind of as my form of meditation with the Lord. And now some of you might do it a little differently. Some of you might be able to find a quiet place in your house and sit there with the Lord and that's great. I don't do well with that much silence. I get antsy, so I use my outdoors activities as spending time with the Lord. So I'm on this hike and just kind of been reflecting on my life up until now and kind of some past experiences and kind of a big overarching theme of a lot of my reflection is fear and anxiety. <clears throat> and to me, fear and anxiety is basically one and the same. Fear comes with anxiety, anxiety comes with fear. And yeah, I'm sure you guys could guess that is what the theme was gonna be just due to what we're experiencing in the world today. And now I don't really wanna go into a big fear of coronavirus and all that. I'm gonna to try to keep this personalized and kind of close at home that you guys can really relate with and so can I. And now I hate to break it to you guys, but no matter what really happens with this coronavirus, school is still gonna be in session next year. And that's gonna mean for some of you, new classes, new teachers, professors, um, a new school maybe, a whole new school in general, uh, new friends. Some of you are graduating college or graduating high school and going to college. Some of you are becoming freshmen in high school and all those are great new chapters in your life, new experiences, and that's awesome. But they also can come with some fear and anxiety as to what's next and what's coming with these experiences, you know? And I can totally relate to that except I'm on the far end of the spectrum from you guys. As in, I'm about to graduate college here in the next couple of days, depending on when this video comes out. And leading up to this point, my life has never had any more anxiety ever. I, don't, I can't tell you the time of my life I've ever experienced this much anxiety. And I'll give you a little backstory on that here real quick. So it was no, late November, early December, I applied for an internship with Young Life. And in my mind, I was like, this is all I want to do, nothing else, this is going to happen, all or nothing. I fill out the application, send it off, and I'm like, God, please make this happen because I have no idea what else I'm going to do. Because all my eggs are in this basket, if I don't get it, I'm just going to pray that I get something else, you know? So all these like what ifs, you know, like what if I don't get it starts creeping up. And then... I finally am waiting, November rolls around, and in November, I get an email saying, hey Max, we'd love for you to interview for this position. I was like, sweet, fill out all the information, pick a time slot, send it off, and I'll, I'm waiting, and I'm thinking, man, what if I bomb this interview? There's no shot I get this internship if I bomb this interview. So the more, like, what if start creeping in, and at this point, I'm waiting a couple weeks for the interview, so I'm getting a lot of anxiety built up. Interview comes and goes. I, th I think I killed it. I don't know. And then at that point, all you can do really is replay the, the interview in your mind. So now I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, the week of spring break rolls around and I get the call. Hey, Max, congratulations. You got the interview. We're ex excited to have you. And I'm juiced. I'm excited. I'm jumping around. I'm dancing. Like, this is awesome. I know I got the internship. Awesome. Except they hit me at the very end, like, hey, Max, but we don't know where we're going to send you yet. And I'm like, more waiting. Are you kidding me? How much longer do I have to wait until I know for sure where I'm going? You know, like, set this in stone. Because if I don't know where I'm going yet, I got to pack up this apartment. I got to find a new apartment, wherever, whatever new state I'm going to, you know. On top of finals is right around the corner, you know. So I'm thinking all this in my head. And then finally, just two weeks ago, I got the call that I'm going to University of Missouri. And I'm like, cool. That's five hours from home in Chicago. And then that's six hours from my brother in Nashville. So I'm like right in the middle. Great moment. I'm excited. I'm happy. But all of a sudden, that moment gets kicked. That excitement gets kicked out from underneath me. Because I keep allowing these what ifs to come in. You know, I've been experiencing this, these what ifs the entire time. Like what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. And that this moment is such a happy moment that this what ifs come in of what if I'm not good enough, you know? What if the team doesn't like me? What if the students don't like me? What if I don't like 
living in Missouri, you know? And then today on my hike, <clears throat> I was replaying this moment in my head. I'm like, you totally ruined that moment by allowing these fears and these what ifs creep into your mind and totally drift you from what should have been happening in that moment. Because in that moment, I should have been so grateful and thankful to God for answering my prayers up until this moment. Because let me tell you what, guys, I was praying like a dog these last couple months, just praying every single day, God, please let me get this interview or this internship. Please, 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 like begging, praying, like I'll do anything type of prayers. Like, please, God, like this is what I want to do. So I know what I need to do. I need it. And I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, and finally I get it. And I should have been thanking, like, God, thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you for doing this. I'm so grateful. Except I wasn't saying that. I was allowing myself to go down the what if path. And I hate to break it to you guys, but and I know it's so cliche as well, but our life is not meant to be lived in fear. It's not. It's that simple. Because those I truly believe that those thoughts of anxiety and fear and that's all workings of the enemy trying to drift us off the path of the Lord. And you see, what we're supposed to think about is told to us here in Philippians 4.8. It says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. It tells us right there. And I don't see anywhere in here where it says fear, anxiety, unworth, unworthiness. Like, I don't see any of those things in there. We're not, see, we're not supposed to think about the fear or the what's next because we can't control the what's next. We don't have the power to control our future. Only the Lord knows what's going to come for us in our future. And the only way we kind of have a glimpse or might be able to tell what's going on with our future is if we're in this daily state of a meditative prayer with the Lord, thinking of the things that he wants us to think about, not drifting down the enemy's path, thinking of fear and anxiety and all those things. We have to focus our mind on the good, on the path that the Lord wants for us. And like I was saying, we could kind of get a glimpse of where he wants to go down the, the, his path, by staying in this prayer, because once we're in that state, and we're on that meditative state with him, in prayer with him, knowing him, knowing what he's doing in us, then we can kind of see the path that we're going down, the path that he's chosen for us. But until then, we're gonna be living a life of chaos and fear and anxiety if we allow the enemy to take over that way of thinking for us. See, I know it's hard, don't get me wrong, to give your trust into the Lord of Lord, I give you everything. Here's what's next for me. You have no idea what's next. And that's hard to trust that God knows what's best for you, but I'm telling you guys, he does. And you see, kind of a trick for me to kind of keep myself aligned with the Lord, if you will, to keep me on that path, is to have a kind of memorized, memor, I memorized some scripture, but it's more of like a prayer for me. It's kind of like I say, so like in stressful situations, or moments, or whatever it may be, I go, Lord, I know there's a lot of me that needs to change. Invade me with your love. Grant me the courage to walk the path you've chosen for me, regardless of where it might lead, and regardless of what it might change in me. See, I use that in those stressful or uncertain moments where I think of what's going to come, because I can't change or direct where we're going to go in life. So I just use that to realign myself and the thoughts of the Lord. And that's what we're encouraging you guys here to do today in your Trinity group. Memorize Philippians 4.8. And once you do, get together with your group and just recite it to each other. And I totally encourage you guys to use this trick. It doesn't have to be this specific verse. But find the verse that speaks to you. And use that kind of as your realignment with the Lord when things are getting tough or things are getting hard. So... Guys, thanks for joining me today. Hope you have a good one. We'll see you soon.